Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Hyrule Chronicles. This is episode 131. My name is Articulate T, and this is our Legend of Zelda D&D campaign. And with me, as always, we have Renji Vox being played by Nether. Good time zone. We have Hikan Sio being played by Alvarez. Hello. We have Zaiden Shari being played by Robert Pirate. Hello. And we have Max being played by Keystrith. For, for podcast people, my audio is shit today. Deal with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but, so, friends, what happened last time? Last time, the Storm's Eye managed to stave off a false flag Salt Falls flag attack on Rudol Village, and whilst gathering the villagers in the town square to speak to them about their situation, um, the Storm's Eye offer refuge in Hyrule Castle Town to anyone who chooses to travel there. The mayor of the town tells them that Rosa Krieger, the dark nut that was hired by the village for protection, hasn't been seen for days. And through further conversation, the Storm's Eye figures out that the, his disappearance was somewhere around the time that they had met up with him on their way to the Sheikah Monastery a few days prior. Deciding to head up to King's Ward, as the Dark Knight had been traveling that way, the Storm's Eye noticed figures that seemed to be looking at their travels, but disappear just as they are noticed. They travel through prior battlefields of the Civil War, with decomposing bodies lying around, and voices of ghosts of the war from days, weeks, years past being heard. There are many ghosts, and there's necromantic energy that hangs about, getting stronger. Traveling on, the storm's eye encounter a copse of trees and notice the dark nut Rotter Krieger, injured and resting against a tree. They approach him and offer some medicinal aid, and he tells of his encounters, plural, with the Lionel that roams these lands. Rotterkrieger has been fighting him for the last few days, with the Lionel pursuing him and attacking him, putting him into the situation the Storm's Eye had found him in. They leave Rotterkrieger in a better state, able to travel back to Rudol, and they head further into the direction of King's Ward. And, after a night's rest, they encounter a figure once again that's staring west. The figure, a girl, a girl holding an apple and wearing a dress in an ancient style, murmurs a warning to them of a being creating and controlling undead before she stares at each of them creepily before disappearing. Indeed. And so it is that we return to this scene, having just witnessed the vision of this long departed soul. It is still relatively dark. It's getting lighter, progressively. But having now more or less reached towards the end of your eight hour rest, um, it is taking a while for the sun to creep into the sky. Um, at the very least though, it is light enough for you to be able to see in each direction without too much of a problem. Um, and perhaps even light enough for you to spot potential uh, attackers from quite a distance away um, the question is do you wish to wait for it to full the sun to fully rise before you continue on your journey to king's ward or do you wish to um, make a start now and get there sooner i don't know personally i kind of probably am, am woken up by uh, Max and Zayden. No, oh, sorry, uh, Max and Akan, who had been, uh... Wait, no. Uh, we were already woken up, did, weren't we? Yeah. Yeah. Woken up by ghosts. Um, I think that we should probably wait for a little more light, uh, unless we can find Rhoda Krieger's tracks on his way into the glade that we spent the night in. Uh, because the point of this is less going and checking on King's Ward and more trying to find the Lionel. 
Okay. All right. Um, so if that is the case, uh, give me a survival check. Those who wish to look for tracks. Yes, 15. I would like to help with someone because I know I'm not very good at it myself. I think I have good survival. I think yours is one better than mine. Mm. Yes, that's good survival. Then I'll help Robo Pirates. Thirty. Oh. While you guys are doing that, I'll be keeping an eye out for danger. Okay. If that's the case, give me a perception check. Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Okay. Uh, so, with a 15 and a 30, um, you are able to find uh, some tracks that are reminiscent of Rotokriga's footsteps. Um, they seem to be coming from the northwest, northeast, rather, um, which is indicative of... Um, of his present or like him leaving somewhere like king's ward um as far as a 23 perception goes uh for identifying danger you don't seem to find anything immediately it is oddly quiet out here on this uh on this front of the war Okay. So, um, I think we'll follow those northeastward, which will take us towards King's Ward anyway. Mm -hmm. While we do so, can I kind of like rack my brain and see if I remember, try and see if I remember anything from like my studies or the information that I've gotten through uh, absorbing the harvester. Sure. What would you like to? What would you like to know? Um, anything about Lynels here? Like, if if there's anything, their kind of hunting methods or their um. Uh, any tactics they may employ? Give me... Um, damn. This is one of those moments where I'm like, I, I can't wait for us to start doing Pathfinder 2nd Edition because knowledge-based mm -hmm. skills are so varied and useful that you can basically mm -hmm. say anything, but there's only like four in 5 ADD <laughs> that work. Um, I'm going to say, give me a... Uh, Give me a nature roll or a history roll, whichever one yeah, you prefer. Nature or a history roll. I would go for history, please. Okay. That is a, uh, a 13. Um, so with a 13 in history, you start to think back on less about uh, natural documentation of mm -hmm. Lynels and more their presence in historic events. Um, right. From what you gather, as sparse it is, as it is, you can't at this moment bring to mind some of the more intricate details. But mm. the general knowledge of Lynels appears to be that they they typically hunt alone, even from each other. Um, mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that they always operate alone. If they're given incentive to work in a group, they will take it. But it's mm. um, oftentimes they are quite capable and willing to operate in solitude. Um, you know that they are. Uh, you know, in conjunction with your encounter with Rotterkrieger, you know that they are incredible marksmen. Um, and also incredible martial combatants. Uh, they are... It's, it's likely because they operate in solitude that 
you don't really like they their their martial knowledge reflects that um mm -hmm. but that's as far as you can tell the problem with historical stuff especially in the land of hyrule where history is quite bad <laughs> at being recorded um uh, yeah. It's difficult to tell whether or not a lot of the stuff that would be about Lionel's would be actual scientific fact, or if mm -hmm. it would be flowery aggrandizing of uh, heroes and legends and all that kind of stuff. That's fair. Speaking of Pathfinder 2nd Edition, real quick, I would like my exploration activity to be cast a spell, and the spell I'm casting is Protection from Good and Evil, because there's a lot of spirits here. Okay. And because I'm doing it through the heart, that affects the entire party. Nice. Very nice. Just going to continue watching out for danger, specifically... Arrows flying from the resurrection of an angry Lionel. Okay. So it is that you follow these tracks. As you do so, you begin to maneuver along the distant plains of, of the west of Hyrule, uh, much like before. Um, there's comparatively little vegetation around except for grass except for the long grass um because of that it is noticeably quite windy um but the uh the land is by no means like completely flat um lots of rolling hills as you wander on um it's at this but it's not too long uh, I would say around about an hour and a half worth of walking um, that uh, you crest a hill and see what appears to be the aftermath of a scuffle. You can see bits and pieces of broken ablative plate um, lying haphazardly in the area. Uh, a number of arrows, um, the length of javelins, are stuck in the ground uh, coming from uh, a much more northern direction by comparison um you can see there's a you can make out quite significantly that there was indeed a scuffle or a struggle um before eventually uh Rotterkrieger opted to flee um there's yeah there's there's a little bit to examine here the fight from what you can gather from your base perception and insight and general martial skill at this point in your careers, um, it didn't last long. Uh, it's quite possible that if this was the last conflict that Rotterkrieger had with the Lionel before attempting to flee, they probably were of a mindset to get out of there anyway. Um, but yeah. Uh, there are a couple of other details that might be gleaned if you would give me a perception check, perhaps. Absolutely. Perception, another 15. Wow. <laughs> That's how it's going to be today, okay. <laughs> I see that this is the game that we are playing. Um, <laughs> as you examine this area, you notice that in on top of the scuffle with the Lionel, you find a couple of other prints in the ground. Uh, a lot of them appear to be um, appear to be far more regular sized footprints, but by no means do they seem to be the same sort of shoes that are worn by uh, Hylians, as it were. Uh, they seem to be uh, a little longer and thinner um, and they're also accompanied by cloven hooves that are smaller than other cloven hooves. You, having seen Lionel's, in fact, I don't think Lionel's have cloven hooves because they're part horse. So it's, so they wouldn't have a cloven hoof. The, oh no. Hmm. Hmm. But you do find cloven hooves still. 
in addition to non-cloven hooves. Mm -hmm. Side the line rangy. Are... Yes. These are, and I'll point out the tracks. Well, my first thought is the Lionels could be riding goats. But that's a silly thought. Um, possibly if... It seems odd for the Lionel to be here just by itself. It may... I don't know. I, I've never heard of a Lionel herding any uh, cattle or any beasts. They are usually solitary beings, but if the need or the purpose is greater, they might work together. Um, I don't know if that's the case right now, because it's, well, we're not hearing anything in regards to multiple, uh, multiple Lionels, but then again, that could be, usually if they are spotted, then they have spotted you as well, and they are rather aggressive. Is there anything else I can glean from maybe a nature check or uh, an arcana check if yeah. if I try and recall from the harvester? Give me a nature check. Nature check. Here goes. Oh no. Oh, that's a bad miss. Mm. Um, with a nat one for a seven, uh, you. <clears throat> There are a lot of animals that do have cloven hooves. Um, could be cows, could be uh, could be goats of prodigious size. Um, difficult to say. And with goats the of unusual size. Yeah, and with the Gauss. with the footprints that are that seem humanoid but longer and thinner, it's also difficult to say. Um, it's entirely possible in this instance that it was just maybe a group of local farmers had been caught up in the in the scuffle or been caught up in the excitement and had uh pa like attempted to flee by passing through but that's it seems a bit too concentrated for that um can i attempt to identify them of course uh 12. the 12. for 22. Or a 22 if I have advantage. Okay. Um, so with the, if you do receive a little bit of help, you do, uh, you have a look at these tracks and you think to yourself, <sighs> what animals would you know that are appropriate for such a setting as this? And you only know one other animal that is as useful as a mount as a horse. And that would be a bull boss. Which, uh, which for non-Zelda people, is a giant boar. See, I was thinking about Auden goats. I was thinking about marplins, but they also <laughs> don't have cloven hooves. Fair. I don't know. We'll inspect the tracks, look around the area to see if there's probably expected damage to the nearby trees of like boars grinding their tusks against them. Yeah, you have you have a look around. It you can see evidence that there have been animals that had grazed here, and there is at least one or two trees nearby that are uh that have the telltale damage of boars of that size, but it's oddly absent um, and also as you examine these tracks you find that 
it's too coordinated for wild bull boss. Perhaps the Lionel has gained leadership of a cadre of moblins. They tend to ride the Bulbos. That sounds reasonable. Yeah, but it's a headache for us. It makes the tracks easier to follow, though. That is true. Okay. So it is that you keep maneuvering onward. Mm -hmm. Following this new cluster of tracks, which conveniently is going in a similar direction as to when Rotter Krieger was going. And you head further north. Um, once more, as you, as you journey, uh, as the sun rises and finally blesses the area with actual daylight, uh, you can't help but notice the the sheer lack of ambient nature, the noises that you took for granted perhaps several days ago as you would wander through the wilds. Um, Luckily, at this stage, it doesn't appear that any of the vegetation has uh, started to wither, if trends like this hold true. But the the noise, the, the wind itself, which is slowly, almost imperceptibly, getting to a point where it just dies down, uh, it's unsettling. Mm. Um... But yes, as you crest a hill and find yourself um, moving down to a, um, uh, like in between two hills, like a little dip, a little valley, um, Max, as you are the person who is keeping an eye out for danger, you notice uh, towards the west appears to be a collection of individuals. Um, it seems that there appear to be roughly 12 of them. Uh, they are relatively short, but their arms are long and their skin is green and they have horns protruding up the sides of their heads. Um, They're all clearly armed and several of them are riding upon the backs of giant boars. And they are heading your way, though they don't seem to have noticed you yet. Pulling us point in their direction is a trouble. If I noticed them, uh, would I be able to identify them? Yes, you've in fact. I think you've in fact spied creatures like this before. These are bulblins. Uh, they are a subtype of blin where they are quite mercenary. They are a little more intelligent, or nominally a little more intelligent than most blins, and um, they are... Uh, their society dictates in most cases that the strongest is in charge without question. Um, so in most cases they will uh, lend out their... Um, well, what, whatever they do is dictated by whoever has been decided as being strong enough to be in charge. Um, mm. More blends, more problems. <laughs> uh, I relay this information about the Boblins to my colleagues, my friends. Um, and... Just go, all right, uh, well, I wonder if they are traveling with the Lionel, or if that's just a direction of convenience to them. I couldn't say hmm. the Lionel is pretty strong, which as you said, kind of fits their MO for following somebody. True. I think... 
Hmm. If you outright attack them, then I wonder if the Lionel might show its face. Well, I was going to ask, did we want to fight them, or... I believe we actually interacted with the Bulbin at one point, and Max can speak Blin, I think, was kind of one of the things that we figured out at that point. Is that correct? Yep. Or, or do we want to try to talk with them? What do you say? Might as well give a talk a chance. Sure. Not opposed okay. to it. Okay. Okay. And if they respect the strongest, then Max can be as intimidating as Max wants. <laughs> <laughs> that's out of character <laughs> that's an excellent maybe, question maybe we can have extra uh, forces in our fight against Lionel this way okay <sighs> let's hey. approach so you're just going to walk straight at them, or is uh, is there going to be a, a different type of preparation in terms of this, or what? What is the plan? How is you? What is your approach? Describe to me your approach. I think I would like to uh, go stealthy and invisible, and if Max is going to talk with them uh, and and try and intimidate them, I will be there in case of trouble. Okay. Myth is going to look to the other and say, what kind of thing should I say? Um, probably ask for why they're there. Maybe if they don't talk about the Lionel yet, ask them if they s they've seen the Lionel. That sounds good to me, that's about it. Um, I'll approach behind Max, but I'll... Uh, I'm not trying to be stealthy or anything. Okay. Mm. And Zayden? Uh, I'll go alongside Hikan. Okay. So, Renji, you disappear. Mm -hmm. And then the three of you uh, approach out in the open towards this collection of bulblins. As soon as they see the three of you, they stop in their tracks. And one of them uh, raises an arm as uh, the others pull out bows and knock and aim. Um, the, the one at the front has keeps his hand up. Um, uh, as you are approaching, he uh, call like he raises his head a bit, and there's this piercing screech that he does um, that seems to echo out over the plains. And then a moment, a couple moments later, somewhere more to the east, like behind you at this point. Um, there's another very distant call in response. Um, and is it then, a Belblin call, or is it some one like something else? It's a, it's a Belblin call. Okay. Yeah. You um, you would know that Belblins are capable of doing that. The uh, mm -hmm. they. <laughs> they can they scream real good is is mm -hmm. their thing um they, they do a scrim they do a scrim um it's chiefly because because of because of their nature and usually bulbins find themselves in areas of open plains and stuff it's just an easier way like they are able to do it 
and they use it as an easier way to communicate between distant groups. Um, but uh, they haven't opened fire yet, and Scream hasn't alerted the the ones that are with this one to uh, to attack in any fashion. But it just watches and waits for you to approach. I don't slow down. Yeah, that's fine. I think instead of being like staying with the group, I wanna like get as close to the like the leader of the pack. Okay. Um and if that requires a stealth check then do let me know. Um I would say yes, but because you're invisible, you have advantage. Okay. Just regular advantage. That's a 33. <laughs> so that's, that's not not quite the natural 20. Yeah, because this fo like he can't use his active perception because the focus is on the others mm -hmm. in your group, so you yeah. don't have to worry about it. It's, it's, I'm um... in sneak attack range. Yeah. Okay. Is that and as you, how close do the others get before you stop? I get. I keep walking until it looks like they're going to swing at me. Okay. Um. You walk up to you get about twenty feet away before the one at the front says in common, "Stop." Okay. I stop. Collaborate and listen? No. Oh. <laughs> We're probably going to listen. Yeah. The, uh, as you stop, the the bulb at the front doesn't take their hand down, um, but says something on the lines of You do not look like uh, You don't look like soldiers. Armed, really well though. gave that away. Well. Are you travelers? Are you part of this war? We're traveling. Hmm. Very well. Do you have business with us, or...? Only if you can tell us where that Lionel is. Nods a little bit and thinks. Says, um. We don't get to hang out with the Lionel as much. From what I understand, we're on something of the same side. But. Um, they like to operate on their own. Uh, we have our orders. But the, um... We don't know what their plan is. A couple of us have bumped into him every so often. But, uh... He's usually done what he needs to do by the time we get there. Well, we've got some business with them. Do you know where he usually patrols or whatever? The Bulban looks up and down, uh, nor north to south, left to right. Um, says, usually the whole plains. The last definitive place I know he was at was on the road to Sarcosa. Uh, apparently, we've been directed to attack a supply convoy before coming back south. Um, Besides that, I think they just let him do what he wants. It's, uh... Not exactly much that we... And he's interrupted as... From out of the blue... An arrow... As tall as he is... Straight through his midsection. 
And as the uh, and as the other Bulbans stop and look at what just happened and where the arrow came from, another one, one on the back of one of the bu- of the bull boss. That's the size and says, "Well, that's not good." And just looks in the direction the arrows are coming from. So roughly, uh, I need to count this out as far as distance goes. I need to zoom out a sec. There we go. Little under 500 feet away. Um, you can see a blip on the horizon past a series of hills and trees where there is one shape that is just standing there. Um, Gonna just glance at the remaining goblins and say, either run or try and save your own lives, and then start walking towards it. Cool. You want me to roll intimidation to see if they follow one of those orders? Yes, please. Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Yes. You, you give this order, and the, and there's a pause as the Bulblin. There's like a couple of Bulblins will pick up the fallen, and then they'll kind of scatter around you. They'll stay stay in one direction, but they'll maneuver Mm -hmm. around all of you. and yeah i'm gonna pull folks to a map and then i would like everybody to roll initiative please map time so this map is a bit different from our regularly scheduled maps um it's long oh yes it's long each square is 15 feet okay um let's see where's our initiative thing there it is Let me also do a roll for that, if I can get to it. This is just my life, it seems. Every time I every time I GM, I cannot roll a decent initiative score to save my life. I mean, that's on fine. the plus side, he's going to get a few shots off because we need to get to him. Yes. Okay. There's a good bit of music here. Uh, would this one work? This will do. Okay. So, if I quickly do this. Alright. So, just uh, as an aspect of this map, again, each square is 15 feet. Um, much like in normal combat, you are capable of, um doing uh like your full movement and everything like that whatever spells you need the only difference is we'll change map by, probably by the time you get to within comparable range of the lionel uh the tree to icons on the map specifically count as full cover um, oh nice yeah so he cannot attack you while you're behind the tree um but uh he uh, uh, in other cases it like as I was statting him out, it's like they had the trees have to count as full cover because he's got sharpshooter. He's not gonna <laughs> care about any other type of cover. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, yeah. So as said, the goal in this instance is to get as close to him as possible in order to initiate proper combat. Um, and first up on the docket is Zaiden. So if the... If our whole plan would be going from cover to cover, and we don't actually need to worry about his attacks as long as we can hide... Uh... We could take the easy way and... I shall go for the magical power of fate fifting, as I attend to do into an earth elemental then using earth glide i'm just going to be underground the whole way nice oh 
uh, I can go 60 feet, so one, two, three, four. Underground. Cool. Nice. Excellent. So you watch as, as Zaiden uh, transforms into a mighty being of stone and promptly melds into the earth beneath your feet, uh, presumably to utilize the very ground as cover. Um, awesome. Hey. Renji. Uh, still invisible. I'm just going to make a run for it. Okay. Uh, I will run and dash here. Okay. Max. Want to go fast. How do you want to go fast? Hmm. Sorry, I just got cleaning some stuff. That's right. Yes. You can be fast by yourself, right? Eh. 60 feet per round if I'm not attacking. Okay. You do have bonus action dash as well. Oh, yes. So 90. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry. Dash and dash. Yeah, so I, I could have gone... I technically could have gotten over here. Can I do that retroactively? Yeah, sure. Okay, then that is that. Because if this is, yeah, 90. I've got enough high level spells. Gonna use this to, to get myself 60 feet of movement speed. Okay. Very good. Uh, I'm gonna dash. No, I can't dash. Uh, I'll move here. And I'm gonna start dashing next time. Okay. And then he can. Is muted. Is muted. Uh, I'm going to do something silly, but we might be able to uh, figure out some uh, needed information. I'm going to dash there and then use a bonus action to use patient defense. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. That's the case. The Lionel, who, while sharp of eye, can't still can't make out details from this far away, is going to knock some arrows and will let them fly towards the only person who is outside of cover, which is Hikan. Um, so patient defense, they have disadvantage on this, right? Correct. Cool. Uh, that'd be 10, natural one. Um, and then the second arrow, another 10. Jesus Christ. Ooh. <laughs> this is my it's luck tough. today, folks. Um, <laughs> and we are hoping for more. Yeah. So as you move, like begin to moving be fair, into place, to be fair, and... he's probably less used to people running straight at him while he's shooting at them. Hmm. True, but I'm still somewhat sad that I've gotten two nat ones in a row. <laughs> That's fair. Um. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Uh, giving us a false sense of security for later. Yeah. The um. So you begin running forward. Uh focusing yourself and your surroundings you see flying straight at you uh a a couple of arrows tipped with uh vibrant flame you maneuver expertly out of the way of each one as they thunk into the ground behind you um as you keep on running uh yeah Zayden. uh one two three four i'm done 
Renji? Uh, probably the same. Uh, trying to zigzag through, uh, to... Can, can I do this? Uh... You can, like, go where Hikan is, then down. It'd still be the same forward movement. Say... Yep, that's right. That's, yep, there we go. Uh, then that is, that is what I'm, I'm doing. Yeah. Neat. Okay, you... Uh, swiftly move between cover. Max. Uh, around three, one. This okay. And then he can. Okay. We have 105. I can make it to this without spending any resources. Cool. Okay. And that's the case. Uh, then on the Lionel's go, going to prepare an action. Zayden! One, two, three, four. There we go. Okay. Renji? Uh, probably the same kind of deal as before. Yep. There we go. Okay. And then Max. Gonna get to this spot. Okay. All right. Uh, as you leave cover, the Lionel's um, prepared action goes off. As he waits for someone to leave cover, sees the the thing flying at him with the big blue wings, and decides to take a path shot. Um, Don't worry, he'll probably hit me. Seventeen. Yep. Oh, okay. Uh, so you take I 15... sixteen for ages. Oh, I see. I keep forgetting you're an HP tank. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you uh, as you leave cover. Uh, an arrow flies straight at you, catches you in the shoulder. It doesn't sink in, thankfully, considering the size of it, but it gl grievously glances off of your scales and leaves a trail of flame as it hits you. You take 15 points of piercing damage and 6 points of fire damage um, as, the, uh, as the arrow manages to nail you in the shoulder. Um, yeah. Then... Yeah, my, my health bar is not dating on my screen, that's fine. Okay. We can see it. Yeah. yeah. I'll just refresh while while it turns it on. And then it is Hikan's turn. I'm gonna zoom in on that. Okay. Twenty eight thirty five. Hundred and fifty. <laughs> okay. Uh I'm gonna use all of my actions to dash. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And oh, that no. spends one key point. Okay. You just uh, oh, that's amazing. Caution to the wind. There's like in the uh, in the uh, like the tall grass sort of thing. You see this this line just rapidly approaching this line. <laughs> um, okay. If that's the case on the Lionel's actual turn. Um, before people manage to move, maneuver into actual melee combat with the guy, um, he's going to take two more pot shots at Hikan, who is ever so exposed. Um, not a disadvantage because you are uh, not using patient defense. That is correct. 22? Deflect missiles. Hey! <laughs> oh my god, you finally get to use this. <laughs> I haven't used it since I got. Uh, I haven't used. I used it once against the fight with. Uh, Amazing. Erwin, but I haven't used it since. Yeah. So, he fires the arrow, and then Hikan simply pushes it over and down, and it sinks into the ground next to him. Nice. Oh nice. no! Spending key points. No, I'm not going to send okay. it back. He'll fire far. another one, but I don't think a 16 hits you. A 16 does not hit. Okay. Um, cool. And uh, with that, he will utilize his uh, 
it will utilize a free action now that you are within melee range and you are more or less the priority uh, to drop his bow. Um, and we'll use a, uh, I think an object interaction and just a general free action, the same thing. But we'll say for the, in the next thing, next turn, he will draw his weapons. Um, but yeah, that will be can... the finals go. So they aren't the same thing, but he can still draw his weapon as part of the attack action. Is okay. the ruling on that too? Thanks. So, okay, Zayden. Game is one, two, three, four. There, there we go. Okay, Renji. All right. Uh, still invisible. I will go one, two, three, four, five, six. And hopefully, this guy does not see my individual footfalls. I think more distracting stuff is going on with the. the I guy, know, the, but the, it's the, all the, I know. The guy <laughs> catching spears and slamming them into the floor, and the dragon. <laughs> <laughs> I, I base this only on my interactions with Lionels in Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, mm -hmm. where even if I stealth with the stealth suit, like, set on, they see me. <laughs> yeah, they do. Never. I have yes. not played this video again. That is absolutely yeah. fine. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's fine. I mean, you can, I can have you do another stealth check if you would like. Do you want me to? Nah, it's fine. Too, okay. Far too distracting things are happening. That is correct. Um, but, uh, yeah. So you are there. Grand! Max! I'm to try and slip around. With a dash, that's my, my turn. Cool. Um... Okay, he can. Okay. Actually, okay, wait, no. As a bonus action, because I can do that with my sorcery points. Mm -hmm. I'm going to. It's 120 feet range. Slow on him. Oh, nice. So, attempt to save. Natural 20 for 22. That meets it. Yeah. Damn. So, he is not slowed. It's an attempt. It is an mm -hmm. attempt. Okay, so it's we plus also two know on wisdom. Yeah, I was going to say, we also know he's not that wise in comparison. That's fine. <laughs> okay. Uh, as for Hikan's turn. Um, so if I move here, I technically have 10 feet of movement. Uh, do I want to dash to get closer? I think I'm going to wait there. Okay. And as a bonus action, I'm going to activate my astral self form, which I finally thought of what that looks like. Mm -hmm. Um, it's kind of a illusion over Hikon, where he has kind of the, uh, he doesn't have the hat, but he has kind of like the flowing, uh, tunic and the markings on his face of the Fierce Deity. Nice. Nice. And that is two key points. And I can't do anything else. I can get closer as an action, that's about it. But I don't want to get up in his business with Zayden all the way back there, so. Yeah. What I'll say as you as you get into position is uh, I'm going to move folks onto the much closer map now. Ooh. I'm just going to add people to this turn order because... Uh, the turn orders are on the other on the other friggin map. Um, mm -hmm. Hold on, I can, do I can this. roll initiative I'll again and just that. and then that was a six. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so I'm there. Uh, so I'll say with the distance that um, in this, uh, as we've gotten to this part of it, 
Um, <clears throat> Zayden, your next turn will have to be spent moving, but that at the end of that, you will be on the map. I won't make you do like three turns of just getting there. That's really silly. Um, it feels about that close anyway. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm going to move you down here so I can do this. Cool. And then that's 24. And then... <laughs> I'm just going to move Max down here so that I can right-click and add turn and then move him back because <laughs> Roll20's UI won't let me do that, apparently. Um... Nope. He's simply too high. Mm -hmm. and, was eight. Yeah, you were. Yes. 8.03, and the liner was 4. Cool. Uh, Descending. That's the way we were. Awesome. Final. Right. Uh, Lionel's turn. Um, now that you are within melee, it's going to use a free object interaction to draw weapons. Um, drawing a brutal looking longsword and a bladed shield. Um, but instead of... Um, instead of moving into melee, is going to uh, utilize something else. So... He can't see me. Oh yeah. Um, if it yeah. is a, if it is a cone effect, though. Yeah, it's... that might not matter. Let's see here. Yeah. But then he has sharpshooter, so it doesn't matter. Okay. Um, he's going to uh, draw in a breath and spit out uh... a fireball of about ten feet in diameter at Hikan and at Max. Um, yes. so, that'd be one fire... <laughs> Fuck. Um, okay. Natural 20 on Hikam for a total of 59 points of fire damage. Not very nice. Okay. Yeah. So, I'm going to reduce some of that with my Body of the Astral Self reaction, which nice. reduces that by 13. Okay. So, you said 29 minus 13 is 46. Okay, so 46 points of damage as it hits you with this fireball. The other one going at max. 27 for 19. Okay. Okay. Um, cool. And he would ordinarily get a third target, but he cannot see Renji. Um, cool. Uh, that would be the Lionel's go. Zayden, you spend your turn getting to the arena and you arrive at the appropriate time. Um, then, yeah. Renji. All right, so um, I want to get as close as possible without risking my cover. Um, so I am going to travel straight up here. And then with the fine, uh, I believe that was 75, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then with my final 15, I'm going to end up here, having exhausted all my movement, my action, and my bonus action. Okay. But I'm still invisible. I'm still invisible. All right. Max. Quite uh, closer. That's 60 feet a moment. Mm -hmm. Then I'm gonna see the bonus action blast. On the, the dragon transformation. Okay. Dex save for that. Uh, 21 exactly, um, permitting half damage. Uh, Why is that 21 and slow is 22? I don't know. 
interesting. I'll go over them again and if I win, it's not my turn. That's fine. Um, but yeah. Uh, and so... then my action. Mm -hmm. I'm within 30 feet now. Hey, uh, Raji. Mm hmm. Oh. Uh, you cannot see me. Can you hear it? No. Well, then you don't get it then. <laughs> Alright. Fine. I, guess I, I, I wish I could, honestly, but I am enjoying my invisible phase right now. This is the price you pay for your hubris, Invisiboy. <laughs> There's my hubris. I'm trying to stay out of draw range. <laughs> That's fair. That's okay. I was really liking his saves today. Um, oh, yeah. Oh. Even worrying, worrying about him having low rolls. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. I was worrying about that. Um, Shut the fuck up. Yeah, I will. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that is 20 lightning and uh, da -da -da -da, with additional... Yeah. Cool. Okay. So let me... Yeah, a total of 36. All right. Awesome. Um... Okay, so that would be a lot of damage. You just swoop in and with a torrent of terrifying uh, electrical power, um, you barrage the beast uh, with your with your arcane might um, and deal some grievous wounds. Awesome. Uh, is that everything you can do on your turn? Uh, yeah, move bonus action and action. Nice. Be calm. All right, let me just double check. I'm sure I can make it there. Yeah, okay. I just wanted to be sure. Mm -hmm. I, I so, figured out what the slow thing was. I hadn't adjusted something after getting it on Magic Item. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, I so everything I... except slow. I will get up to the Lionel, using my bonus action to activate my Eldritch Claw tattoo, and then I'm going to swing twice. Um, usually this would be at advantage because of flanking, but it, Renji's trying not to be noticed, so I don't feel that flanking is fair in that particular instance. Ooh, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to do two strikes. Does a 25 hit? A 25 hits. For 15. Mm -hmm. And 27 for 15 more. Nice. And then... Oh, oh wait, 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 wait. I think I can put a little more stank on that. Um, <laughs> I think it's... Make unarmed strikes, reach five feet greater than normal. Can you shoot? Um, I, I'm not finding it, so go ahead and move on. Okay. Um, there it is. Then it is the Lionel's go. Uh, let's see. I just need to measure a thing. You are 20 feet in the air. Okay. And you are 15 feet out, 20 feet up. Yeah, I think he's going to do this. Um, so, uh, what he does on his turn is uh, watching Max approach uh, in the air and blast him with uh, lightning energy and seeing he can't rush up and strike him twice in the midsection. He's going to uh, flip the grip on his sword and bellow out a, a gout of flame into it and then promptly bring it down to the ground. I need everybody who is within 20 feet of him to give me a dexterity saving throw. Don't worry, it's fairly easy compared to most things you've done previously. Nope, nope. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so, uh, Renji, you take 11 points of fire damage because you have evasion. 
Um, I do, yes. Max, you take... wouldn't be. Because hmm? if Max is 20 feet up and that distance away, they'd be outside of a sphere. I ah. suppose that would be correct, so don't worry about it, Max. Um, Yay. And Akan, you take nothing, because you have evasion yep. and have passed the deck save. Um, I will not speak of Euclidean <laughs> geography. <laughs> um. That's okay. It's all good. Um, but that would be his... Uh, that would be his attack. Um, I think as far as tactics goes for Lionel's, because they like to be maneuverable, he is actively going to leave your threatened space, or attempt to. Um, so I'm going to move him in this direction, here, uh, before an attack pops off at him in any direction, if people would like um, to. Does he disengage? No, he's already exploded. Then... Yes, I am going to. Okay. Um, Get him. I will. Uh, being invisible gives me advantage, correct? Those being invisible can... gives you advantage, yes. That just Wait, did the damage. That just, just did the damage. damage. Don't assume <laughs> that I... you've hit him already. <laughs> I know you roll 3d20 in order to try and hit them. <laughs> 23 for 17. 23 for 17. That hits That's and does damage. damage. That's just a normal attack. Oh, oh, yeah, it is. It is. You're right. Yeah, so roll um, two more times because you are you have just superior 23. Damage. 23, okay. Oh, and my you, goodness. You do get sneak attack on it because you get sneak attack once per turn, not once per round. Yeah. Then 33. Okay. Oh dear. <laughs> I am so sorry. It's fine. I, it's okay. I'm sorry for Pathfinder. <laughs> it's all good. Um, okay, so that was your attack as he leaves your threatened space. That does mean yes. that you are no longer invisible. Um, I am no longer invisible, and that was my reaction for this uh, uh, until the end of my turn. Okay. Uh, uh, he can't. Now it's my turn for an opportunity attack. Yes. Uh, natural <laughs> 20. Yes. For 15, 16, 17, 21, 24. And I'm going to give this a try. We're going to stunning strike him. DC okay. 21 con. Uh, he rolls a 20. He's, he's going to utilize his indomitable will to reroll. Okay. 24. Oh. Alright, so he passes. Okay, it's a plus 11. Okay. Alright. Okay. Cool. Uh, so that was his movement there. So that was that far. So how far did he go? He went, he went 15, so he can go another... Thirty-five, so he's gonna go here. Hey, that's my thing. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> right. And then that'll be his turn. Zayden, you are part of the battle. Oh my god! Yay! And still oh. underground, from what I can understand. <laughs> Fifty feet away, so I could basically get next to him. Oh yeah, I forgot to do a. You carry on. I forgot to see if his things recharge. Um, Correct. His explosion first, because he still has pops of his fireball. Um, but... Where's dice? Just need a d6. Five. He does not recharge the explosion. Huzzah! Yeah, carry on, Zion. Hmm. Just trying to decide if I turn back to human to do spells, because I have good wisdom targeting things. Can you not... Do spells right now as a druid with their how high level you are? Uh, only some very f only the healing spells basically. Huh. Fair enough. And fairy fire. I could do fairy fire. But most of the ones I'm looking at, I cannot. Because huh. they have material components. Ah. Is not the focus part like is that still tied to you? Um. No, it's uh, this is the one. Uh, somatic and verbal components, while the BCW aren't able to provide material components. 
Okay. Think, oh, yeah. Generally, it's supposed to be you're not supposed to cast spells with material components until level twenty. I was wondering if I was wondering because when it comes to material components, the only ones that you can't replace are ones that are consumed or have a monetary value tied to them. Um, so anything like, say, good berries, sprig of mistletoe is replaced by a focus. But I don't know whether or not because you're in B shape, while your focus is merged to you, you are able to make use of it. Is the other thing. In that case, would you just grow the good berries directly from your body? Yeah. I do not wish to imagine this, but I have. <laughs> Yo, welcome. And for fear of upsetting people with certain phobias, I will not elaborate. Uh, can't wear this false crown. Uh, quickly it merges with the form. has no effect until you leave the form. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. I, I suppose it is just verbal and somatic stuff while you are in... in shaped, changed. Okay, just check the range on these. Hmm. Of all, of the nearly, how long has it been since 5e came out? Like, nearly a decade and a half of playing this a system. A decade. Yeah, a decade. I've not, I've never encountered that specific hitch. <laughs> it's really interesting. I will come out of the earth. Mm -hmm. Turn. Oh, I've got the wrong thing set. And back into a human. Okay. And then I will start by attempting a confusion spell on the lionel. Okay. Uh, uh, wisdom save. Uh, 16. Um, I'm guessing that doesn't pass. No. Okay. Mine's so 19. And he's pass. going to Indomitable Will again in order to uh, try that again. Fails even harder, so it's he is confused. Okay. Wonderful. Um, as ever, the sound of uh, Korok seeds and a strange dancing image through his brain. And just in case, I'm gonna. Just it's just a continuous uh, Hestu dance. Just constant Hestu dancing. Wonderful. <laughs> nice. Okay. Maybe use this as like half cover, just yeah. so he's not focused on me as much. That's fair. Renji. Um, with him being confused, I am going to move. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Bonus action. Uh, no, not bonus action. Dash. I'm bonus action. Hexblade's curse him. Because I can do that once. Yeah. And this time I'm doing it before my attacks. Well, not not before my attacks. But you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, this on this round. So uh, there we go. That's it. And with that, I am going to cast Eldritch Blast three times. Okay. Is it three or is it four now? It's four now! Yes. So, um... No advantage here. So just one, 25, the hits. 28, mm -hmm. 28, and 18. Okay. All of those hit. Okay, so... Uh, seven. Okay. Seven. Mm -hmm. Ten. Mm -hmm. And three. Twenty-seven. 27. Cool. Is Hexblade's Curse proc on those? Uh, they should. Uh, bonus to damage rolls. Uh, equaling my. Oh, that's uh, 27 plus 24. 51. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. I got your bag. You do. So, 51 total damage, you said? Yes. Damn. Okay. Oh, maybe, maybe not slashing twice is is the better option now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, as you uh, rush after this now confused and dazed Lionel, uh, uh, looking in each direction for these blasted Koroks that are just. 
pestering him in every direction. You unleash a barrage of magical energy um, that slams into him as his defenses are lowered. Max, it is your go. Lie down here. Just to try and prevent it from going inside this direction. Do do my big cone. Okay. Twelve. Hey. Uh, I think he is going to use his last indomitable will on that one. Okay. Good. So that will be another dex. 25. Okay. So you used it, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll follow that up with Synaptic Static. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, let's see. More muddle thoughts. I'm just going to very quickly see a couple things here. Um, a half of... 34 is 17. Yes. Okay. So as you as you force him into the corner, as you barrage him with lightning and magic in all directions, you uh, ignite a spell that uh, muddles their mind. Um, how would you like to do this? Because you scored the exact amount of damage oh, and no. he cannot possibly pass the intelligence save. <laughs> Whoa. I think the way it works is like, you know, chasing the, the laser beam of lightning with just static energy that, that fucks up his brain. Uh... It's it's not the one that does the head explode. Uh, so I think he just kind of stops. Just gets and because he's like has four legs, he doesn't fall over. He's kind of locks maybe, in place. Maybe like falls to two knees. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Yeah, you just you hit him with the you hit him with the immediate uh, semi rigor mortis and just kind of like half falls over and mm. remains limp um, as the uh, as the lightning has taken its effect and just switch his brain off. Yeah, you just switch his brain off. The, um... As this happens, mm. I think this is actually the first time that uh, you'd notice these flecks of dark matter that you're used to seeing from my magic kind of like go up into the air from it and then absorb into me oh. as i heal six hp oh my god you heal six hp is that the first time that, that you've managed to get the the healing effect off of possibly not <laughs> but uh like this is the first time that i'm down on health, <laughs> Down health relatively speaking. Um, <laughs> so that is, it, it doesn't happen often, or it just doesn't happen when I re remember it. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, but I will say the Lionel wrist like remains there. Yeah. Mm. Um. <laughs> Uh, people in chat are being hooligans, and uh, uh I know I'm uh, one of them, yeah. I know, try it, try it, and uh, then uh, Rangers just go kind of like, Oh, that is very odd. Mm -hmm. Also, he is out of breath at this moment, he's been running for. Like a Not full a minute at sprint. You, yeah, you yeah. got some good cardio in. <laughs> yeah. God, I should have done stretches. Oh dear. But yeah, you uh, 
the battlefield falls quiet again, save for the occasional zap and spark of uh, remaining uh, lightning, uh, the smell of ozone um, and burned wood, uh, the, uh, the looming corpse of this Lionel that's just this once ferocious creature that had been utterly and well i say i wouldn't say utterly he did he did well considering most things i think um oh, we could have done a lot harder <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he got some he got some really good shots on me yeah. that's true and like that first those first fireballs were no joke I, yeah. i'm very glad i was invisible yeah, I I designed him like years ago and completely forgot his stat block. So I'm I'm glad it held up. Um, <laughs> um, I I will say if he had twice the HP or thrice, maybe we could have still gotten him. Yeah, I mean, in, in most instances, like mm -hmm. Lionels are usually meant to be quite challenging, but you guys are yeah. levels like eighteen. Yeah. <laughs> Did you You've expect got... us to go off him earlier? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the, it, well, not necessarily expecting you to go after him earlier, but he was there. And you went and did everything else and came back with all the benefits of being leveled up and stuff. So it's it's, it's fine. It's like it's honestly kind of fun. Like, if I wanted to do a, a more challenging Lionel, I would have not given you a red Lionel. Um, yeah, true. It's like, oh, shit, it's the silver-haired one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Just throw out a gold line on like, oh no. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> but that does that does make sense more. I was like, well, this is in my head for a moment, like, this is hardly a challenge. And I'm like, oh yes, because this was a challenge that was here way earlier. Yeah. Um, and it's just very much a different uh style of DMing, I think. Like I don't prep for things that may come up sessions down the line which is fair in a which different is, style of dming absolutely but have... a different and valid style yeah. but um, also remember this entire campaign has been played through once before that is true absolutely true just not like on cameras and stuff yeah, yeah. i i'm 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 sorry i i do not mean to have this come over uh, come across as criticism no, it's, um, it, it's absolutely fine. Seriously. It's one of those things where it's like, there are going to be in, like much in the same, like inverse way of things. Cause prior mm -hmm. to this, you would encountered like an adult dragon. You had, mm -hmm. um, you come across a bunch of stuff that would have been way above your pay grade. If you were to attempt, like the first yeah. time you met Kriek, not Kriegstrom, that's, that's the other dragon. I mean, the, um, Rot Rotterkrieger, not Rotterkrieger, the other dark nut. Oh. Eisenfuhrer. Uh, Eisenfuhrer, uh, yeah. yeah. That's a... Uh, yeah. He, like, that was way above your pay grade when he first turned up because he was a dark nut and you were just starting out adventuring. But, like... Yeah. It's, it's one of those things where um, the inverse is true as well. You will eventually mm. find instances of places you hadn't explored yet, which either were like the expectation was that you would have went in that direction or they were just they were just set dressing at the time when you first heard about them and like now you're now you're here you have got gained an experience in the story and are way more prepared for it so it's like things like that will occasionally come up it's um, as you say, there are different styles of DMing and everything like that. Every, the, the core fundamental rule of any table, regardless of what you do, what system you run, is ideally everybody should be having fun. That, that's rule zero. And like, if that means that one, one table does things one way and another table does things another way, perfectly fine. Absolutely. Um, this has been the moral lesson of this episode today, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> also... We are still having fun. At least, yeah. at the very, at the very least, I am, and I hope everyone else is too. Yeah. I had so much fun with this game. I played it twice. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you're having fun with uh, what may come after this. Yes. Hey. <laughs> good. 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 Excellent. Um, I was actually curious. Mm -hmm. Is this the same Lionel that we freed from Flamgo's? Give me a perception check. 
Absolutely. Got to open up my sheet again, and... I'd like to help. Perception. You said help? 29. Yes, it's very much the same one. You can recognize some of the same body markings on it, the same uh, notches in the horn, uh, horns that it has on its head. Um, does he have a price tag? He does not. I think he would have had the wherewithal to remove that shortly after being free. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it makes sense. <laughs> but I would like, I, I still would have wanted to ask. That's fine. That's okay. Uh, I do want to check, like, his gear. Okay. Um, because usually, from what I know, Lionel gear is like more powerful and more more does more damage. It is. Um, however, as you kind of examine all of his stuff, um, he had a he had a longbow, uh, mm -hmm. which looks like this vicious metal-looking thing, um, and. Uh, a long sword with a wide blade that uh, seems kind of hooked and jagged at the end. Uh, a shield that also seems to have blades running along the edge of it so that he could do some damage with that if needs be. Uh, he has what appears to be about 15 arrows left, all of which have a little um, uh, kind of uh, iron sort of caged um tip where it's surrounding a bit of glass okay, with Jared. liquid in it yeah um and uh the the armor that he appears to have been wearing at the time seems to have been hide armor um okay. but the thing is none of it is magical and it's all sized for a huge creature ah boo <laughs> <laughs> We're not gonna let that stop us. <laughs> what what challenge rating is a Lionel? Stellar. Challenge rating of a Lionel is 17. Oh, that Lionel right, right there is 17? Yeah. Can I keep his equipment? <laughs> oh. Okay. okay. Mm. You could do. In fact, uh, yeah, you can. It's just good luck carrying it around. <laughs> um, I'm in the bag of holding. Or Max had a haversack, which is a bigger bag of holding. It is, but it's one of those things where it's like, with bags of holding, it's more just having to... Get like, it out. Mm. Anyth anything that can fit within the mouth of the bag can go into the bag of holding, and so long as it's of a certain weight, I believe. So also, you might... Max's bag has a lot of stuff in it. Yeah, so it's it might th be... There's an entire library in that bag now. Yeah. <laughs> So it like at best I would say the longsword maybe you could probably finagle it through but I would say the bow and the um, the shield would probably be uh, difficult to squeeze in. You can probably fold yeah. up what's left of the hide armor, but then by that point you're probably just like you are Lionel with a fuck ton of hit points. Shrug. The sword will be enough. Okay. Uh, to to echo the. Uh what has happened in chat, uh, if you are turning into a Lionel, we'll have to nickname you Richie. <laughs> oh. Hello. <laughs> I get it now. Yay! <laughs> oh, oh God. Um... <laughs> But yeah, so as as said, the the longsword is because it's a huge longsword. It does three d eight damage as part of its uh, its weapon thing. But it is non magical and is reliant on your strength modifier. Um, I might have to do some rechecking of this old stat block before I send it your way, which I'll take care of between now and next session. Um, <laughs> but I, I am now very curious if you'd allow me to use hex warrior on it. <laughs> You'd still is... have to swing it. <laughs> but, so... no, 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 literally, when, when Hex Warrior allows me to use my charisma modifier to wield weapons, that's okay. the thing. Do you have the charisma of something that size? Like, like, is your ego the size of a Lionel? Yes. It's 20, so yes. Well, I think I'm... If I shape change it to a Lionel, I'd be able to use the fireballs, the uh, reroll, yeah. and the ground explosion. Mm. Yes. Eight. 
Uh, yeah. Does it have the letter? That'd be good for the final boss. Just suddenly Lionel. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> also, at that point, I'd be big enough to... I don't know if it's possible to hold it, but to swing uh, his own sword back at him. Oh. Oh, okay. He's ass with Mara. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh god. Um but yeah. Uh so you have you have successfully looted this Lionel and are now standing in the middle of this uh this field, this battle torn field. Um I'll move you folks back over to the main map of Hyrule for the sake of it. Okay. We'll close down this thing. Do we go. wanna do something about the bulblins because they are well, kind of the Opposing force that are. Oh, that's true. And... They did just get shot at by one of their own guys. Yeah. They might have Can opinions I... about that. Uh, I do want to know if they're willing to like they're they're mercenary as you said. Mm -hmm. Um. I wonder if they would be okay like somewhat merging with society if we were to say like hey you're on the on the wrong side and you know one of your own started shooting big ass arrows at them um honestly I don't just do that I, anymore I, 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 in, honestly in West, I, I, I would just consider maybe don't fight the war anymore as as a win yeah that's this fair uh give me a um give me a history check sure that's 17 okay um thinking more about your uh about bubble and stuff as mm -hmm. as said typically their society demands that they follow the strongest um you well, don't he just know. killed the lionel <laughs> yeah you don't know whether or not the lionel was in charge of the bulbans at the time or if there is another voice that they are answering to as part of the uh um what's the word as part of the rebel army as and it's entirely possible that they aren't currently following any strongest at the moment or the strongest that they have is actively being paid by the rebel forces um so it's there are different ways that you can go about this. It's possible that you might be able to convince a, a bunch of folks without having to do much of a fight in the first place if you were to mm -hmm. say, uh, provide tangible proof that you have taken out the Lionel, which, given that you have the sword at the moment, is proof-ish. Um, they might need something a bit more tangible. Um, can we take one I mean, of his horns? Yeah, considering I'm, I'm still in dragon mode right now, I can laser one of his horns off. Okay. We, I genuinely want to try and see if I can wield the uh, the long sword with the hex warrior. I'm wondering uh, about that, having a you said it's not magical. Can I hex get hex warrior? Can I get uh, it whenever, whenever you finish a long rest, you can touch one weapon that you're proficient with, proficient with, and that lacks the two-handed property. That might be a thing. Yes. Yeah, it's a long sword for a huge creature. Yeah. Like... The the key problem that in that is that I don't think there's anything it, I I don't know if there is anything within that description that says that it changes the prop the physical properties of the sword. So while you're able to swing it with your charisma, it's still as mentioned a long sword size for a huge creature, so its actual physical weight might make it unwieldy for you. Ooh. Um, it says with that weapon you can use your charisma modifier for the attack and damage rolls until you finish your next long rest. Mm -hmm. um, so... Would it be cool for Renji to use a giant fuck-off sword? Yes. Here's some other issues with it. It is a long sword, which means uh -huh. it doesn't have the finesse property, so you're not going to get your sneak attack on it. And no. it's I'm not saying huge. I'm huge. Okay, okay, okay. Just, just... <laughs> To, to give context here, 
I would like I would have liked to, to see Renji pick up the blade, infuse it with this hex warrior energy, lop off his head, and bring the head with us. And then probably never use that weapon again because my goodness is it unwieldy. I mean, it's possible to do what that. What would we take the head in? That's true. We, we'd just drag it along to the, the Boblins. We know where they are. Fair enough. But that is me going for only rule of cool. I understand all of the reasons why I shouldn't. <laughs> I think just oh, taking this would be just easier to carry in general. Absolutely. Um, then I would, uh, I would vote for bringing back both horns. Yeah. Maybe we can do something with them. Maybe. Okay. They are alchemical ingredients. Okay. I, so the... I just don't. I just don't particularly want to leave a, a trail of Lionel blood behind us as we drag the head around. Yeah, true. <laughs> that would make us very easy to follow. I mean, maybe we give it to the Boblets. <laughs> but no, uh, horn horn is is good. Horn yeah. horn ID is good. Okay. Awesome. Uh, so. The plan, I'm guessing, is to see if you can track down the Boblins uh, in order to um, convince them to uh, no longer partake in this particular war effort. I would also just check, is the Lionel Shields carryable on its own merit, not in the back? Or is it too heavy? Uh... Oh. I think that's uh, one of those things where I imagine it would be it would be carryable, but it would be actually quite heavy and awkward. Um, you wouldn't have to drag it. It's not like it weighs like half a ton. It's um, it's basically a piece of metal. It's a me it is a metal disc that is almost as tall as Max is. That sounds mm. very heavy. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you set forth uh, to try and find these Bulbans, and uh, as I might actually have to plan that bit, I think what we'll do is, after a successful defeat of the Lionel, um, we will call the session there for now. I know it's early, but uh, mm. yeah, I, I wasn't anticipating parlay with par with the Bulbans. <laughs> um, so I'll, I want to make that bit at least very exciting when we do it um or at least entertaining uh mm -hmm. so for the moment for now i have been at the tea this has been uh hyrule chronicles the legends of the D, D campaign with me as always i have had renji vox being played by another goodbye i have had hikan Sio being played by alvarez very well i have had zaiden shari being played by river pirate yeah, I had been thinking about what is the strongest creature we've met lately, and I was thinking it was the dragon, but now, you know, got Lionel and a weapon. So. Mm. Um, and I have had Max being played by Keystrith. I swear to fuck, my audio will be better next time. Also help me, I will just start burning things no down. No worries. We'll get it sorted. And we'll see you all next time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye now. Bye. Bye. Bye.